Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and we're here with the Let's Talk team. It's Susan Mills, Kim Dixon, and Lisa Hi, Hey, hello, everybody. Hello. The day after our one-year birthday show. Man, we had so much fun. Ooh, too much fun. <laughs> Not no, fun. there's no such thing as too much oh, fun. Okay. Yeah. It was fun. Thank you, everybody who came to wish us happy birthday. Thank you for all the well wishes on the internet. It was it was a good day. Mm -hmm. it, was. it was a good day. And we had a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. I crashed. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I was <laughs> like, I know, I know. It was very, very good. Okay, so it's May now, and May is the time where we get to celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So this special month honors the rich history and the contributions of AAPI individuals in shaping our cultural and social landscape in the United States. And this month, there will be all kinds of festivals, educational events, and lots of opportunities for us to celebrate. So I love this video because we get to see um, AAPI folks doing all kinds of things. And uh, my all-time, all-time favorite Asian American or Pacific Islander is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, <laughs> as you all know. <laughs> Like if you have if you watched the show any amount of time, yeah. you're not getting a little hot under the collar about that. So happy Asian American Pacific Islander Month to the Rock. <laughs> and here I thought you were gonna say Kim Dixon. <laughs> She's a close second. It's just right. something about the way. You can't top the rock. No. You cannot, you cannot <laughs> top the rock. But yes, also Kim, happy Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Very exciting month. Um, just an uh, interesting little fact, um, our Forrest Tucker um, with sports, he is 1 16th Chinese, so a happy Asian American Pacific Islander Month to Forrest as well. Okay. We have two, oh, two Asians awesome. here in the newsroom. Okay, nice. shout out Forrest. <laughs> we got to see him a little earlier today, so we did get to shout him out as well. So uh, happy um, Heritage Month to everybody, and we are going to continue to celebrate throughout the month, so don't worry, we got you covered. Okay, up next, I'm a little bit sad about this one because uh, I love ramen. Like, you know me, you know I love ramen. But the only way to make ramen even better is to have birria ramen, which is a Mexican beef. What? Really great place in town has this, El Cid on National Avenue. They may be closing. This is, you may have seen this if you've driven by off of Winchester Road. Uh, yesterday in um, district court, judge signed off on an eviction notice. They are quite behind on their rent. Um, and the property is owned by the Walker family. And they just said, you know, it's you own, it's five five thousand dollars in back rent. You, you got to pay up or get out. So the owner is going to try to ask for uh, an extension, but it's not looking good at this time. Oh, mm -hmm. that is tough. sad. They have some of the best brunch. Too. Have oh, you had the brunch no. there? Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's really good. And yeah. it, I like the building too. It's just so creative. Yes. I remember when that building was dilapidated. It was, mm -hmm. it, you know, it was just on the brink of being torn down, quite mm -hmm. honestly. And um, a couple of businesses before them came in and then they came in and they really brightened it up. They yeah. really, yeah. you know, spruced it up. So I'd hate to see that for them. I you know, know, hopefully we'll, they'll be able to be, uh, come up with a plan mm -hmm. to be able to help pay the back rent. Yeah. It's hard to be a small business, especially a small business it restaurant. Is. Yes, Very tough. exactly. Yeah. And the people that work there are so kind. I've always had a really good time when I've gone in there. There was one time where I was in there like every week, like, ramen, please. Just just give me the ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of sad news. All right. Now, um, Kim, do you have $4 million? Let me check. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there's somebody who does have $4 million, just go on to the bank and get it out because Coach Cal and Mrs. Cal's old house is for sale, and we have pictures of the inside. Check this house out, you guys. It is 9,500 square feet. That is not a typo. It has five bedrooms, eight bathrooms. It's 1.2 acres, has a pool, a three-car garage, and a basketball court, a half-court basketball court. And for the low, low price of $4 million, you too <laughs> can be the owner of Coach Cal's old house, y'all. Oh, that I is have, beautiful. I have an idea, though. We are yeah. always talking about us being the golden girls. <gasps> yes. And if we could each have a GoFundMe where we request $1 million, <laughs> that house could be ours. It could be. We get two I bathrooms like each. Yes. <laughs> two <laughs> bathrooms. Come on. <laughs> Um, <laughs> can we do it? Look, if yes. I get a million.
million dollars on GoFundMe. Yeah. I'll be sitting by the pool sipping pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I drive by the house all the time because it's on Richmond Road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to take my son to karate, go by there all the time. And I always wondered what the inside looked like and what the backyard looked like because uh -huh. they have that big fence up that's, you know, you know, a deterrent from me walking into their yard and going into the back. So um, I was excited to see those pictures because it's beautiful in the back. I love that backyard. Uh -huh. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the inside, too, is gorgeous. Yeah. So Jimmy Phillips, uh, our, one of our, our sport, a sports guy and a traffic guy, oh. he heard a rumor that there's going to be an open house potentially oh. there. Oh, uh, actually, today at 1 o'clock, so not too long from now, this is Jimmy Phillips' rumor, so I don't know. But I can just imagine, like, cars backed up on Richmond <laughs> Road, just nosy people yes. wanting to get inside and see it. We, well, we are going to be the clown car getting out of the show. We are getting into my car, and we are heading straight over there. <laughs> just to see the inside. Yes! 12, 12.30, we're going to be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they, I, I know for a fact that there are people who do not have the money but are calling their realtor like, yes, yeah, so I'm interested in that house in Richmond just to go in there. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. That's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a down payment. I just want to be nosy. So it'll be really, 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 really interesting to see who ends up getting that house. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll keep our eye on it. So, all it's, right. We expect an invitation. We, oh, <laughs> hello, come on. Okay, everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, is flirting with other people okay if you're in a relationship? Let's talk about it. everybody, welcome back to the show. It's time for the Countdown Conversation, and today is a doozy. Let's get those six minutes up on the clock and let's get to it. Okay, little flirt. So, is being a flirt a problem if you're in a relationship? It can be innocent, it can be playful, but it can also be a way to express interest or appreciation, and there's a thin line between harmless and, you know, taking it over the line. So, ladies, is it okay if you're in a relationship to flirt and would you be okay if your partner or spouse was a little flirty birdie? Mm, interesting. Um, I think it's okay to window shop. Who doesn't like to look every now and again? But feelings aren't involved with that. Um, you know, ever since I've been with Adam, I just, I literally don't want to flirt with anyone else. That's, the idea just doesn't cross my mind. Um, that said, it would not be okay with me mm -hmm. if he were doing anything with that kind of intention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No good. Yeah. I, you know, I'm kind of the, the same way, but I think that it's a conversation you need to have with your significant other because I think people's definitions of flirting can vary yes. greatly. Um, I'll just give you a little example. So Cameron and I, when we first started dating and stuff, we loved the little kissy face emoji. You guys have gotten it from me. Oh, yes, yeah. for okay. sure. Uh -huh. And so, but he was sending it also to women that were his friends, uh -huh. of, you know, male, female. And he's like, it's really just because, you know, I love you. And, um, and I'm like, oh, but what if she thinks Thanks. Yeah. It means something different. He's like, I hadn't thought about that before. How is it interpreted? So we now send kissy emojis, but only to the same sex. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. Like Cameron's probably kissy face emojiing Mark Pope right now. Like, good job on that recruit. Love him. <laughs> I love that. And I love that you work together as a team to to come to a conclusion on what you're how you're gonna handle that situation. That's awesome. I you know, no, I don't think flirting is okay. And um I you know, it, you just I feel like Kim, I'm like, I don't even feel the need to do that. Now I do tend to be nice and talky talky with everybody. Uh -huh. I just that, that's kind of my nature. And sometimes that's misinterpreted as flirting yeah. and so you know I don't mean to do it it's unintentional yeah. um, I treat everybody the same really mm -hmm. yeah. um, so sometimes that does happen and you know it gets and it just causes problems and it, you know and I don't mean it to and I think Doug is very understanding of that as well so sure yeah. so I'm definitely a charmer and a flirt uh, <laughs> you might no. Get, yeah. <laughs> no. a little, bit, little bit but when I'm in a relationship I turn that off I shut it down I get serious because I, I 
would never want my partner to feel disrespected. Yes. Uh, but I didn't realize that I was a charmer and a flirt until one of my friends said to me, he says, you do this thing, you look people in the eye and you really pay attention to what they're saying and you really <laughs> speak from your heart. And he said, one of our friends came up to me and was like, yeah, I think she's the one. And he was like, no, bro, that's just how she talks to me. <laughs> 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 I had to realize, like, that kind of intentional, mm -hmm. connected yeah. talking, people take it the wrong way. Yeah. So yeah, I had to dial that in, because you know, uh, you're sending the wrong message just by being nice. Okay, up next, shower. So the older you get, the shorter your shower time is likely to a survey about showering. I don't know why they did it, but they did. So Gen Zers, so folks ages 18 to 27, spend the longest time in the shower, an average of 21 minutes. That's <laughs> twice as long as the 12 minutes spent in there by the boomers, <laughs> 60 to 78. So I mean, how much time do you spend in the shower and what are you doing in there? So for me, I've got it down to a science. I'm a 13 minute showerer. When I get in there, I get clean, I pray. Sometimes I have whole church services. I'm in there <laughs> dancing, I'm planning my day. The only thing missing from my shower routine is a tambourine. If I can just get me a tambourine, I'll be doing all right. <laughs> Oh, the image. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, man. No, I'm, I'm not in there to hang out. I'm just going in there to get clean, but it depends on how long my hair is. Yeah, it depends on how long my hair is, too. On my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you're good. It's about an eight minute shower eight minute? at this point. Okay. Yeah, the shorter my hair gets. Yeah. Well, I have to make announcements in my house. You know, the, the boys know it's like, I'm going to take a shower, or I'm going to take a shower shower. Mm -hmm. And the shower shower means I'm gearing up for a marathon. That's when I go in, I have to shave my legs, I have to wash my hair, I have to deep condition it, I may exfoliate, and then I wash my body. And then, so, you know, it takes a lot longer. Yes. I don't think I've ever had 21 minutes. No. No. I don't know that what is, is I don't have that time. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I, I don't either. Don't. Nobody Man. got the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody. So, yeah, if the hair is long, yes, I do have to shave, but usually about 10 minutes minutes and to me I feel like that's even a luxury because having kids when they were younger I mean I was like the queen of five minutes shower I was in there and out because you have to because your kids are glued onto the door like well, you know? <laughs> and it's like I'm trying to shower <laughs> you know what, now why is that universal because I remember as a child not letting my mom have any alone bathroom. I know. Like, I know. Why do kids do that? I don't know. They just want your undivided <laughs> attention. It's a security thing. It is. I, I would even slide things under the door, like to my mom. Like, yes. Are yeah. You okay. Yes. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> you okay, mommy? You're trying okay? to get into okay. the shower. You know, yeah. trying to get it. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know why they do that, and they're too young to be able to articulate it. I just, I just, I want a whole science experiment on why because. It's it's crazy to me, you can't get any alone time. It is. Oh man, good talk, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, we'll talk about our 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 our, 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 our other topic on tomorrow. Everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, we have a guest who's going to talk about swashbuckling adventures. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to I'll Let's that. Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and we're here with the Let's Talk team. It's Lisa High. Hello, hello. Our resident <laughs> jokester, uh, Kim <laughs> Dixon, <laughs> Susan Mills, and our guest at the table is Nick. I don't want to say your last name. Vanoy. Vanoy. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Woo! Nick Vanoy, he's the director of The Three Musketeers, which is going to be playing soon at the Leeds Theater. Welcome to the table. Yes, Thanks welcome. For having me. So glad to have you here. So, Three Musketeers, it's an amazing candy bar. Um, it's also a play. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, tell us what can audiences expect when they get to see this thing in, in real life? And I think we have a little video so you can tell us about it and Ooh. we can look at it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, they can expect lots and lots of action, mm -hmm. adventure, big time <laughs> love stories, big evil characters, lots of lots of laughs. Yeah. This adaptation is written by Ken Ludwig, mm -hmm. uh, who's really known for comedy. 
So oh. this this adaptation, I think, is the funniest and the freshest um, that's been written yet. So eh, we're having a lot of fun. There's yeah. so much just big energy, big costumes, big music. It's a big sweeping story, and we're excited to tell it. I see a lot of stabbings happening. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's quite there's quite a few quite a quite a bit of action, quite a lot of stabby stabby. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're stabby we're, having, we're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the costumes were phenomenal, oh, and the man. set design too. Oh, man. Can you tell us a little bit about the cast and the whole creative team behind this? I mean, the, this cast it's it's honestly a. a Oh, uh, ridiculous how lucky we've been to get this cast together. Uh -huh. There are some people in the cast that are true professional actors mm -hmm. um, that make their money at least in part from acting. We have some people from the community mm -hmm. that this is their maybe their first show that they've ever been in, but Aww. have stepped up in such a big way. Yeah. I, I mean, I could not be happier with this cast. They're incredible. Our our Musketeers are amazing, our D'Artagnan and Sabine, that's a new thing with this uh, adaptation She's also. not in the ring. Exactly, yeah. yeah. D'Artagnan, in this adaptation, his sister Sabine goes with him to Paris mm. and ends up joining the Musketeers and she actually saves the day. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! This cool. is the woman power uh -huh. twist that we didn't know we needed. That's yeah. right, that's right. <laughs> but, I, I mean, the you know, D'Artagnan, Sabine, the Musketeers are bad guys. It, I, it, I couldn't say enough about how talented and good this cast is. That's awesome. Very cool, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Evander Sanders Hodges is Hodges Sanders is she's one of the bad guys, she, if you will. She, yeah. Bad gals. Yeah. She's incredible. We had her here in the studio a couple of weeks ago incredible. fighting. She's a really good combatant too. Wes um, Nelson, that's who, who you know is playing Cardinal Richelieu. Oh, that's nice. That's perfect, Nick. Forget um, about it. He's so <laughs> good. He's fantastic. He's so yeah, it's a great to role, watch. too. Oh. Now, Nick, in addition at the Leeds, you all do, um, well, you're a freelancer, but the Leeds sure. Theater does, um, they do plays like this that uh -huh. work on in community. Um, they also do a few other things. So tell me about what else the Leeds does for their community of Winchester. They, they I mean, what do they not do yeah. creatively for the community of, of Winchester? But they have spark classes for kids, also adults. Mm. So they offer classes year-round that you can take. They're, they offer... I think they've had improv classes, mm -hmm. they've had scene study classes, playwriting oh, classes, wow, lots of stuff. Oh. so much stuff. And it's not just for kids, they, they offer some classes for mm -hmm. adults as well. Um, but their community outreach and the, the impact that they have on downtown Winchester. It's great. Yeah, the theater it's itself, fantastic. I believe, serves the community as a place for musicians to come in and different other ah, acts as well. Ah, very cool. Yeah, yeah nice. so there's musical yeah. acts that come through there, but the building itself is historic. It is. And it's beautiful, that marquee. Yeah. Um, so it's just so fun to go see a show it there. Is. So, yeah. You, you know, That's question neat. for you. Yeah. What has it been like directing the show, too? And you help with the choreography as well with yeah. the show. What's that like? Uh, I mean, it, it's 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 wild, honestly. <laughs> like, this this is like my it. directorial debut. Oh, yeah, as like a full production. I've worked with actors. I've directed oh. scenes. I've directed like one acts before. Right. This, this is different. This is yeah, yeah. And, and we chose the three musketeers of <laughs> uh, because why not? Like let's yeah. let's go for it. And uh, so it's been like an amazing experience, an amazing learning experience. It's been so difficult, but. <laughs> so rewarding oh. yeah. Yeah. these past couple of days as the show has just like bloomed into something that we had no idea that it could be. Uh -huh. So it's been an amazing process. I love that. Know? It's like right. go big or go home. Yeah. It's you're right. six three, so you're <laughs> definitely going big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if people want to get tickets for the show, where can they go? They can go to leadcenter.org. Okay. Um, and it's the Three Musketeers. We run. Uh, the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then the 10th, 11th, and 12th. So this weekend, next weekend. That's okay, tomorrow. Great. It is tomorrow. Yeah. yeah we're ready. <laughs> well, Nick, thank you so much for stopping by. So excited for your deck directorial debut, so excited for all the stabby, stabby action, yeah. and the feminist plot line, so thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And oh, uh, oh, uh, happy birthday. Oh, oh I just thank wanted to, you. I wanted to say happy birthday. Thank, thank you, you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay, y'all, stick around. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you what's trending. Welcome back to the show. It's time for What in the World is Trending. This one is so cute. 
Airbnb just announced that you can stay in the house from the Pixar semi-animated film Up. Remember the house with all the oh, balloons? Oh, yes. They are going to build an exact <gasps> replica of this house that you can stay in. When you arrive, it'll be in the air. They'll drop it down on the ground during your stay. And when you leave, they put it back up in the air. Oh my gosh. Where is this? Uh, that, now you're asking too fast. It's in the prompter. Bro, roll it down for me, everybody. Roll it the <laughs> other way so I can find out. So this is going to be in New Mexico. Yes, it's going to be in New Mex Mexico. Now, you guys both have kids who love this movie. Yes, yes I uh -huh. love the movie, too. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. It really is. Oh, my gosh. We're going to be making a trip to New Mexico because we are all going to want to stay in this house. I mean, seriously, like, that is the coolest thing. Absolutely. And it's such a tearjerker of a movie. Oh, it's like, so... Like, it really oh, just it gets really out. Does. That's yes. why I haven't watched it because if I understand correctly, the plot is about a, a husband and a wife who grow old together and then she passes. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then this little Cub Scout shows up at the door. It yeah. won't leave him alone. <laughs> it's just cute. The dog it and the str it's all of it. It's, it's just super a cute. cute. So it brings them back to life, kind of. Yeah. So what are the balloons all about? Well, the balloons are. I he wants was, to travel. He, he he has seen a brochure of this magical place when he was a kid that he always oh. wanted to go visit and adventure to, and so that's where the balloons are take place. Take they him. take his house and everybody, and they go. Okay. See, and this is why I haven't watched it because the last movie I cried on so badly. I can't do it anymore. It was the <laughs> Toy Story. All the animals almost got burned up. I oh, do it's it. so good. Have it seen? What? Yep. Gotta watch. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We're having a therapy session. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. <laughs>